Hey, what's up gang? Kawaii 50 here with another fake grand order video and it is time to talk about one of my favorite servants, Demon Slayer and isekai Persona 4 protagonist himself, Watanabe no Suna. And how much I enjoy this character will obviously not make this video bias in any possible way just so you know. So we're going to be talking about the best allies, craft essences, and command codes to make Watanabe no Suna the true demon slayer Kimetsu no Yaiba on your team. Hopefully this video helps you do just that. And if it does, be sure to go ahead, like, and subscribe. Suna's deck comes with one quick, two arts, and two buster cards with a single target buster noble phantasm. That's right, this is a boss slayer saber, similar in the vein to Rama. His max HP of 11,248 is respectable, as is his max attack of 10,123. Suna's noble phantasm gain per hit is a 0.6, which is okay, honestly. It is just okay. He's got two arts cards and only a singular quick card though, so don't expect yourself to be gaining too much Noble Phantasm. You're really going to need the support to help you go along and do that. And uh, spoiler alert, there's not really any sort of NP charge on Suna's skills, so support is highly, highly recommended. Suna's star absorption is also as expected from a Saber class servant at the standard 100. Suna's first skill is Eternal Arms Mastery Anti-Demonic, rank A-. This increases the critical star gather rate for his Buster card specifically by 300-600% to 600 for 3 turns. It also gives him 3 instances of a 30-50% to 50 critical strength boost, which you have 3 turns to use. Unfortunately, this skill is not as powerful as Arjuna Alters. It doesn't come with the capability to go ahead and charge your Noble Phantasm as well. So it's only almost as good. I really wish we had that Noble Phantasm charge on this. With this in mind and with the Saber class's standard average star weight, we can safely go ahead and prioritize this skill last. Even though the crit damage is tied to it, there's some other things that are a little more important. One of those skills being Suiten's Disciple Rank B. This gives Suna one turn of evade, which is the main reason you'll be using this. However, it also comes with a nice little added benefit of increasing his Arts Card Star Gather rate for one turn and pumping up his Noble Phantasm gain by 30 to 50% on that same turn, similar in the vein of Yaku Munanori. The reason I want to recommend to level this up second is primarily to reduce the cooldown on that evade, considering you're primarily going to be bringing Suna along to fight a bunch of bosses. But that Noble Phantasm game bonus is just a nice little bit of extra gravy. And the final skill is easily Suna's most important, Severed Arm at Ichijo Midori Bashi Rank EX. This increases Buster Card effectiveness by a staggering 20 to 40% for three turns, gives Suna three turns of sure hit, and also has that nice little bonus you like to see against bosses decreasing their critical rate by 10 to 20% for three turns. This is Suna's primary force of damage, and we absolutely need to go ahead and max this out first. Even just the sure hit itself is like very, very nice, but that buster card effectiveness is mainly what we are hoping for. Suna is one of those rare servants where honestly, all of his append skills are really, really useful for him. Extra attack boost is great since he gets a lot of damage pulled out of his face cards with his critical damage bonus, so odds are you're going to be brave chaining with him, so why not pull some extra damage, extra stars, and extra noble phantasm gain out of those extra cards. Load Magical Energy is just great on every single character in the game, Suna remains no exception, and having that extra little bit of starting NP gauge will help him, since he doesn't really have a way to charge his Noble Phantasm reliably himself. And his bonus damage skill is actually Anti-Berserker Attack Up, so he will deal extra damage to Berserker class enemies, definitely reminiscing as to when he destroyed Iba Rocky Doji. So all three of these are honestly worth investing in. 
And now we get into Suna's incredibly specialized Noble Phantasm, Mount Oe Bodhi Oni Slayer Rank A. This deals 600 to 1000% damage to a single enemy and deals 200% super effective damage against Oni enemies specifically. This also applies Suna a special attack bonus on overcharge against demonic enemies to chuck an extra 20 to 40% on that. This Noble Phantasm still does decent damage against non-Oni enemies, especially if you're supporting him with a buster support, but it is against Onis and Demons that Suna really, really shines. You chuck a little bit of that Berserker bonus on him, and you're going to be begging for an Oni Gashima rerun, because my god, Ibaraki would not stand a chance if my man Suna was able to throw his hat in the ring. As with most Noble Phantasms in this game, NP2 is the sweet spot. That is the highest attack boost you will see. There is really no need to go beyond that unless you are a whale that really, really likes Watanabe no Suna. So who do we pair Suna with to maximize his effectiveness? Well, he is a boss slaying servant and he is a buster servant. So easily we want to go with Merlin whenever possible. Double Merlin is absolutely excellent for Watanabe no Suna, granting him the invincibility that he would really, really like to have over an evade, granting him buster effectiveness, critical damage effectiveness, and honestly, most importantly, granting him critical stars per turn. Since Suna doesn't really have any reliable way to generate critical stars, and Suna has only one quick card, we're going to want to go ahead and throw some Merlins with 2030 out there, ideally using their Noble Phantasms, granting Suna a metric ton of critical stars to use against his opponents. Of course, there are other servants we can pair Suna with if you don't have a Merlin, and some of these servants are lower rarity and effective, so newer players especially will want to pay attention to this section. Let's go over a few of them now. Now, if you were good during Nobu's last event, you have an NP5 Nobukatsu Oda, and you can actually go ahead and pair him up with Suna to some pretty decent effect. Of course, Suna is not going to get all of the Nobunaga related buffs, but Nobukatsu is still able to provide Suna with stars per turn, a critical strength boost, restoring HP upon defeat, and most importantly, decreasing buster resist for a single enemy, something Suna will absolutely love to see, and it'll give him a very easy, very predictable target to unleash his Noble Phantasm upon. Hans Christian Andersen still remains an incredible budget servant, and when it comes to supporting Suna, that is no exception. Hans is able to target Suna and grant him critical stars every single turn, as well as NP gauge every single turn, something that Suna is sorely lacking. Human Observation A remains an incredible critical strength boost for your entire party, and Hans's Noble Phantasm can provide some awesome additional bonuses to Suna as well. It's also worth considering Shakespeare for similar reasons. Shakespeare grants a full party buster effectiveness boost, and for Suna in particular, Suna can get his NP gauge charged by 20% from William Shakespeare. And as a final recommendation for Suna, I can also recommend pairing him with Koyanskaya of Light. Most players will use their Koyanskaya of Light when she finally ends up hitting an A as a farming servant for a buster team, but she can actually be effective as a single supporter for Suna as well. She's able to provide him with NP gauge, she is able to grant him special attack against human enemies, so even though Suna said he's not that great at killing humans, well, Koyanskaya can help him a little little bit in that department. She can also restore his Noble Phantasm gauge when he's attacking with his Buster cards and grant him all kinds of additional bonuses to his Buster cards. She is a phenomenal servant you'll definitely want to look forward to, and I felt it was necessary recommending her along with Suna, because they actually pair very well together. Now, as far as craft essences go, we can go a couple of different routes with Watanabe no Suna. If you have some solid Noble Phantasm charge support on your side, then you can go ahead and just focus purely on his Noble Phantasm to try to obliterate whatever enemy you are fighting in a single turn. Of course, our prize for a craft essence like that goes to the Black Grail. But there are, of course, 
other craft essences out there that can benefit Suna as well. I am honestly going to go with Starry Knights as my go-to for Suna because this grants Buster card effectiveness, critical strength, and a starting NPH, so you're not as wholly dependent on your allies to charge that Noble Phantasm Gauge. You've already got a solid little starting boost. If you're looking for a freebie craft essence to help Suna out, and you did the recent Imaginary Scramble event, you likely have quite a few copies of Like a Bird. Like a Bird is excellent on Suna, granting critical strength, buster card critical strength specifically, as well as a few critical stars per turn. If you're looking for a freebie option, this is going to be your best recent pick. I can also recommend A Tale of Love and Hope on Suna if you happen to still have this floating around from the Fate Grand Order Anniversary. This increases critical star gather rate on the Servant by 100 to 200%, increases critical strength, and of course grants a starting NP gauge to boot. And finally, we get to our command codes. If you're looking for the most budget option you can pick for Suna, go all in on that extra damage to Demonic. Go ahead and throw Code Evil on all of his cards, and that's a simple and effective way to boost your Suna's damage. Of course, you might want some extra damage against Demonic enemies. In that case, consider something like Wisteria Scented Lady of the Court, which increases the damage of Demonic enemies by 20% on the engraved card. Definitely put that on a Buster card. The same can be said for Blade of love without a destination, another command code you should look out for for Suna. This increases damage against demonic enemies by 15%, as well as grants some extra additional damage to sky or earth attribute servants, helping Suna's overall damage against other types of enemies. Of course, you can also just go with standard critical boosts on any of Suna's buster cards, with something like the Blades of Neat and Doraku increasing the critical damage on that engraved card. As far as your arts and quick cards go, if you're looking for something more budget and don't want to use Code Evil, consider Star Generation on the quick card, as well as something like Code Cure on those arts cards. Overall, gang, I consider Watanabe no Suna an excellent single target buster servant who is singularly focused and fairly easy to build around. Suna is a character where you are going to sink all of your focus and resources into him. You know what he wants to do. He wants to hit with buster cards. He wants to crit. He wants to use his noble phantasm. And he does that a little better against Oni and demonic related enemies. So you have a clear single minded goal and it is very very easy to execute around with your supporters. Throw a Merlin in there, throw a Hans in there. Basically anyone that can grant buster or critical damage and some noble phantasm gauge to boot, and Suna is ready to go and ready to be your main damage dealer. Of course there are a couple of drawbacks, since Suna is so hyper focused on dealing damage, he isn't really focused on gaining his own Noble Phantasm or generating too many critical stars, so you will absolutely need to build into your entire support, as previously mentioned, in order to build around that. So, Suna in general, if you really want to use him, you have to build around him. If you don't really want to use him, he's not going to be a super helpful backliner or anything like that when it comes to your team. However, we can say that for most characters in the game. So if you want a main Saber single target damage dealer and you want Watanabe no Suna to be that, he will do that very, very well. But of course, I want to know what you all think, so let me know your thoughts on Suna down in the comment section below. Let me know if you think there are any allies, craft essences, or command codes that I might have missed. And if you have been using Suna to great effect, of course, share your experiences down in the comment section as well, as well as how many copies you've pulled. I've seen some people pull like five copies of Suna. I am very jealous of all of you. Luckily, he is permanent, but I still wanted to get as many copies as possible when I rolled for him previously. You can check out those rolls, of course, in a previous video. I want to give a big thanks to everyone on my Discord for being an excellent community and just being super duper nice to each other. Good job, team. Good job. If you want to be part of that Discord community, there is a link down below as well. Big thanks to patrons on Patreon, subscribers and followers on Twitch, and of course, all of you here on YouTube for giving me the motivation to keep hopping on here and making these videos. I'm glad I'm able to help you all, and I really do appreciate all of the support. Anyways, gang, that's it for me, Kawaii50. I hope you all have a phenomenal day, and I'll see y'all in the next video.